everyone today we'll be taking a very important topic that is osteoporosis and we'll we'll cover this entire topic in a quick bit so uh, as the name suggests it is the porous nature of the bone right so in the normal bone can you appreciate these strong interconnected plates right strong interconnected plates whereas in osteoporotic uh, bone can you see these very weak and very thin uh, rod like structures in fact disconnected at places along with this porous nature of the bone right next causes of osteoporosis you have to remember common causes primary osteoporosis post menopausal senile idiopathic so old age women are very prone to osteoporosis next secondary causes can be endocrine disorders drugs malnutrition malabsorption very important cause vitamin deficiencies hematological disorders malignancies liver diseases osteogenesis imperfecta these all make a person prone to osteoporosis now in order to understand the concept of osteoporosis you must remember the concept of bone remodeling along with the four phases of bone remodeling where the first phase there is activation of osteoclast which results in the formation of resorption pits so first phase is the resorption of the bone followed by reversal phase third is the bone formation by the osteoclast and the fourth is the mineralization of the bone any defect at any of the level will result in the uh, bone disorders so in osteoporosis what is happening is increased osteoclast activation what happens is in post menopausal osteoporosis that is after menopause a women is much more prone to develop osteoporosis compared to their younger counterpart why we will see because the estrogen present before the menopause has a very protective action on the bones from the resorption how it decreases rankel and increases osteoproteogen if you remember we have already discussed in our pegets disease that parathormone is the hormone which makes the osteoblast release much more rankel and decrease osteoproteogen the function of the osteoproteogen is to prevent the osteoclast from the activation of rankel it acts as the comp competitive inhibitor so what happens is estrogen it decreases rank l and increases osteoproteogen and thus has a protective action on the bone and it prevents the action of the osteoclast any deficiency of estrogen will result in increased rank l and thus increased bone resorption by the action of activated osteoclast right now what is the role of calcium in osteoporosis calcium deficiency will result in increased parathormone release which will try to resorb the bone and increase serum calcium that is the role of parathormone but this parathormone will in turn activate or increase rank l and thus causes osteoclast activation right next recommended daily intake of calcium is how much 1200 1200 mg per deciliter now what is the genetic basis of osteoporosis you must be knowing very well the importance of vitamin d receptors because vitamin d receptors do have a role in calcium metabolism and bone formation so any defect in vitamin d or their receptors type 1 collagen estrogen you know does have a very protective action on the bone so any deficiency of estrogen receptors will make them insensitive to estrogen and thus their protective action interleukin 6 insulin like growth factor 1 and last lrp5 that is low density lipoprotein receptor related protein so yes osteoporosis does have a very important genetic basis next how liver diseases induce osteoporosis diseases like cirrhosis viral hepatitis alcoholic liver disease do result in the activation of various cytokines for example viral hepatitis leads to increased tnf and thus increase osteoclast activation similarly alcoholic liver disease causes th17 activation and thus osteoclast activation in cirrhosis of liver activated stellate cell decreases the activation of osteoblast so in turn they are resulting in the defect in the bone remodeling and thus osteo what is the diagnostic approach for dexa that is very important dexa is a highly accurate x ray technique which is a standard for measuring bone mineral density dexa right the site of dexa is the most important to remember in late menopausal women it is a hip which can predict the risk of hip fracture because you cannot miss a, miss out this hip fracture it is one of the most important consequences of osteoporosis in perimenopausal and early postmenopausal women the site is spine right if both hip and spine are not available like you cannot use these sites then wrist site can be used. 
Next, bone mineral density report. This is very important. So, what all you will see? This is bone mineral density, T score, Z score, and one more thing is FRAX. So, what you should be knowing is T score, Z score, and FRAX. Now, we will see what is T score. T score. If I say that it is minus 2.5 means it is 2.5 standard deviation below the normal mean we are calculating, right? So, if it is less than minus 2.5, it is osteoporosis, but from minus 1 to minus 2.5, it is osteopenia, right? So, what is the difference between T score and Z score? That is very important. T score compares bo uh, bone mineral density to a healthy young adult. You have to remember if I am comparing a 60 year old woman bone mineral density to a young healthy maybe 20 year bone mineral density that is called as T score. Whereas Z score is which compares it to the individual of same age and sex. Suppose I am comparing a 60 year old woman bone mineral density to another 60 year old female that is called as the Z score. Right, so T score will be able to compare it to a much healthy younger adult. Relationship between Z score and T score if I say a 60 year old woman with a Z score of minus 1, so if I am comparing one 60 year old person to another 60 year old person, maybe her bone mineral density is one standard deviation below the normal. But when I say T score, then this person bone mineral density is maybe 2.5 standard deviation below the normal mean age of a young control group if i if i am saying 20 year old young age group then that is 2.5 standard deviation i hope you understood what is the difference between t score and z score so i already told you t score less than uh, minus 2.5 standard deviation it is osteoporosis severe osteoporosis is when there is association of fragility fractures in a person already there has been occurrence of fragility fracture due to weakening of the bone now, what is the indication for bone mineral density? All women above 65 years, all men above 70 years, already occurrence of fragility fracture, adults with a disease which can cause low uh, bone density, medications associated women who have discontinued the treatment of osteoporosis or in order to monitor the treatment effect, these are the indications for DEXA scan. Next. Now, what is fracture risk assessment? We have already discussed B, sorry, T score, Z score. Now, we will be seeing FRAX. So what does FRAX do? It is an indicator which calculates a risk uh, for the occurrence of fracture in a 10 year of time period. So, it takes into consideration a number of factors like age, sex, height, weight, fracture history, hip fracture, steroids use, right? And it will calculate how much are the chances that this person will develop a fracture in a 10 year period of time. So, it is important. It is one of the new indicators which is often mentioned in your DEXA report. Next, when will you calculate vertebral fracture assessment? VFA. So, if an old woman comes to you and says that she has lost height, her height has decreased 1 inch right 1 inch or 3 centimeter then you can ask for vertebral fracture assessment by DEXA to rule out underlying asymptomatic vertebral fractures because they are very important to be ruled out. Another thing to be ruled out is any underlying malignancy. So, if a woman comes to you and says that the, there has been a decrease in height by 1 inch or 3 centimeter you rule out any underlying fractures vertebral fractures by DEXA that is VFA. Okay. So, next will be Right. A woman comes to you, shows her DEXA report and you see that there is a very low Z score, you will ask for certain tests. How many tests are there? 10 tests. First will be CBC, serum calcium, 24-hour urine calcium, RFT, hepatic function test. So, if serum calcium is high, increased, that is due to hyperparathyroidism. If it is decreased, that can be due to malnutrition or malabsorption. If it is increased, right, hypercalcemia, you must ask for parathormal levels because you have to rule out underlying hypercalcemia of malignancy. That is, if parathormone is increased, that is hyperparathyroidism and if it is decreased or normal, it can be due to malignancy, right, hypercalcemia of malignancy. So, everywhere it is very important to rule out malignancy as a secondary cause, right. So, urine calcium that is uh, another third test. So, if it is increased, how much increase? More than 300 mg per 24 hours that is hypercalciuria, increased calcium in the urine. You have to rule out causes like renal calcium leak, absorptive hypercalciuria and hematological malignancy. Now, what is renal 
original calcium link that is due to defective re re reabsorption of calcium in the renal tubule. So, there will be increased calcium in the urine but the serum calcium will be normal because the defect is in the renal tubules. Kidney reabsorption of calcium is decreased, right? Um, sorry. Um, Ah, that is decreased and thus it results in increased calcium in the urine. Now, absorptive hypercalciuria, right, that can be due to increased uh, 125 dihydroxy vitamin D released in case of certain granulomatous diseases. It can be idiopathic also. Then another can be hematological malignancies, Peggy's disease, hyperthyroidism, etc. Now, if it is low, less than 50 mg per 24 hours, you have to rule out any cause of malnutrition, malabsorption. Vitamin D levels is the fourth test because vitamin D is very important in calcium metabolism and bone metabolism effects. TSH levels, cortisol levels in order to rule out endocrine Cushing syndrome. Then in order to rule out any malabsorption, malnutrition or bowel disease, you will ask for serum albumin, cholesterol, CBC. Then celiac disease to rule out, you will ask for transglutaminase, IgA antibodies and in further doubtful cases, you can take a help of endoscopic biopsy. Then if this old woman of osteoporosis with low Z um, score comes to you and she also has history of rash, allergy, diarrhea, flushing, you must rule out mastocytosis. How? By ordering 24-hour urine histamine or serum tryptase. Next, in order to rule out MGOS and multiple myeloma, in fact, MGOS is more associated with the occurrence of osteoporosis. You can ask for serum electrophoresis, urine electrophoresis and light genesis. Always remember, it is very, very important to rule out malignancy. Right? Next, bone marrow biopsy can be done in order to rule out underlying malignancy like multiple myeloma, mastocytosis, leukemia and infiltrative disorders like Gordon's disease. Now, in bone remodeling, there are certain bone resorption markers like trap, cathepsin, right? And all these markers can be used. Another bone formation, osteocalcin, alkaline phosphatase and these uh, products, right? So, we will see biochemical markers of bone metabolism like in bone formation, osteocalcin, alkaline phosphatase. In bone resorption, there can be in urine or serum cross-link levels of n-telopeptide and c-telopeptide, right?